Thank you, Tasha. Uh, my name is Michael McHale. I'm a candidate for the magistrate judge for the 14th Judicial District Court. Um, before we do anything else, I, I just kind of want to address my appearance right now. Um, two days ago, I was diagnosed with a condition called Bell's palsy, um, which uh, according to the doctors is a temporary condition, uh, can last three to four weeks, can last up to six months. Um, hopefully I'm kind of rooting for the three to four weeks, but it, it causes a, a temporary paralysis or a weakening of some of the muscles in the, uh, in one side of the face. So it's, it's kind of strange. That it's only one side of the face, but, uh, I just kind of wanted to do that to temporarily, uh, I'm either going to look like a, um, uh, like a Bond villain for a while. Um, but, uh, I assure you that I'm not, um, but I just kind of wanted to address that uh, before we started out on anything else. So if you notice anything with my mouth or anything like that, I'm, I, I assure you I'm not having a stroke. It's just a temporary condition that I'm going to have to deal with for a little while. Um, I am Again, I'm running for the, position, for the position of magistrate, which is a new position. So what I'd like to do is start out telling you a little bit about the position and what it does, and then kind of go into a little bit about myself and what I feel that my qualifications are. Uh, the magistrate is was just created by the legislature. Uh, it is the election is parish wide, so everyone in Calcutta Parish will be able to vote for this. Uh, what the magistrate will do is the magistrate will hear uh, all misdemeanor charges, will have pretrial hearings uh, on evidence or, or other things, and anything has to do with it, can have to do with a felony or a, a misdemeanor trial. And one of the most important things that I think that the magistrate does. Uh, or we'll be able to do is be able to set bonds. And I, I think that is a uh, very serious responsibility and one that uh, greatly affects uh, our community as a whole and something that I, I take very seriously. Um, now I'd like to tell you just a little bit about myself. Um, I was born and raised here in, in Lake Charles, lived in Couch Parish all my life. I went to St. Louis High School, Northwestern State University in Natchitoches and, uh, and uh, Southern University Law School. Um, I, I have to tell you that, that I really enjoyed my time at, at uh, Southern and, well, at all the schools I went to, but particularly at, at Southern, it gave me a, a new experience because for the first time in my life, I was a minority on a majority campus. Um, and it, it was a very unique experience. I, I'm, I'm not gonna tell you that, you know, that that, that makes me realize completely what the experience is because you know it it, it it temporary thing but i made some great friends there um had some really wonderful experiences and and i believe that i, I got a, a really good education there that uh, has not only made me a better lawyer uh but a, a better man and a better human being um after graduating law school i came back to lake charles i went to work with uh, uh, my father and two other lawyers uh, first, it was a firm called McHale, Bufkin and Dees, and then not too long after I got out of law school, uh, they split up, and uh, then I, I practiced with my father for several years before uh, he retired and, and ultimately uh, uh, passed away. Um, but I, I got to tell you, working with my father and knowing my father is probably what shaped me more than anything else in, in my life. Um, my father was uh, a, a lawyer. Um, my father represented four people, um, and, and that's what I was brought up with. I, I, I was brought up with the philosophy to stand up for the little guy, and that's how I've tried to live my life. My, my father was very involved in politics. He never ran for office, uh, but he was certainly always very involved. Um, he supported candidates. Um, he was city attorney. He was the attorney for the Port of Lake Charles. Um, but my father's number one guiding principle was that, you know, that you stand up for the people who nobody else will stand up for. And what my father loved about being a lawyer the most, and that whenever you go into that courtroom, whenever you stand before that bench, you know, it doesn't matter if, if you're rich or poor or, or or old or young or, or black or white or uh, you know Catholic or Protestant or, or Muslim or Jewish or whatever, that when you stand before that court, you're supposed to be treated fairly, that you're supposed to be treated just like everybody else, that justice 
is supposed to be blind. Now, justice is blind, but it shouldn't be deaf and dumb. I mean, uh, you know, you, you have to look for, you know, justice. And, and my father fought for that every day of his life, and that's something that he imparted to uh, all three of his children, myself, my brother, and my sister. My, my brother and sister both have law degrees. My uh, brother now lives in Seattle, Washington, and is a judge in Seattle, Washington. Uh, my sister no longer practices law, but, but lives in uh, Los Angeles, California. And I always tell people the farthest away I ever got was Holly Beach. Um, but uh, uh, you know, he instilled that in all of us, that, you know, that, that fundamental fairness. Um, and and you know, that, that's just that's the way I was raised. Um, I, I want to go back and talk about how I think that would affect me as a judge. Um, I've spent a good part of my life, uh, you know, fighting for civil rights, um, uh, trying to stand up for people like my daddy did. Um, and, and I, I think I, I've, I've done a fairly good job of that, but, and I think that makes me uniquely qualified to, to be a judge. I've been practicing law for a little bit over 25 years. Uh, a lot of that has been in criminal law, which the magistrate would ex exclusively deal with. And, and. I mean, I've handled everything from parking tickets to murder cases, you know, and uh, it, it's a great responsibility because whenever you look at what the power is, that you have the ability to literally put somebody in a cage and keep them there. Whenever you can take somebody's freedom away, um, that's, uh, that's something very serious and, and it can be a, a very serious penalty but at the same time, you have to keep the rest of the community safe. And there, there are certain actions that, you know, we just can't let stand. Now, luckily, with, with this job, I'm just going to be de dealing with misdemeanors. Uh, misdemeanors, you know, most of them, the longest I could put somebody in jail is, you know, maybe six months. Um, but, you know, that's not the kind of thing I want to do. That This position, number one, in handling misdemeanors, and number two, in handling all arraignments, the majority of people in this country, you know, God help them, never have set foot in a courtroom. But with this position, the majority of people who set foot in a courtroom and deal with the criminal justice system in Calcasieu Parish, I'm going to be their first interaction with the criminal justice system. And my goal is to do everything I can to make sure that first-time offenders don't become multiple offenders. I gotta tell you, look, I, I've been doing this for 25 years, and I can't tell you how many people I've seen. I, I've done work in juvenile court. I've done work in adult court. I can't tell you how many times, and it's sad that I've seen people in juvenile court getting in trouble, and then a few years later, I see them for something in adult court, and then a few years later, I see them again and again, and these people, they wind up, they're just cogs in the system. I mean, that, that you know, and some of them, man, that they don't have a chance. I remember one time in, in juvenile court, they bring in the, the, the offenders. There's one little kid, nine years old. First off, I was amazed that they made those orange jumpsuits that small. This kid was there because he'd supposed to 357 Magnum to school. How this kid picked up a 357 Magnum, I have no idea. But, you know, you, you look at, at, at stuff like that happening in that age. And a lot of these kids, it's not that their parents didn't know, their parents didn't care. I mean, that they're coming up in a system that everything's against them. And we got to find a way to do better. We can't just be a cycle of prison. So once somebody enters the system, they just kind of keep going through and wind up spending the majority of their life in the system. You know, we have to do better at... Uh, pre-trial intervention or catching people, you know, whenever they're first-time offenders and giving them opportunities. If they have a drug problem, look, man, let's get them treatment. You know, if they have a mental health problem, let's get them treatment. I mean, it winds up working better for everybody. I mean, it's better for society as a whole. It's certainly a whole lot cheaper to get somebody treatment and keep them out of the system than have them just kind of go in and out of jail, in and out of jail, in and out of jail. The other problem that we have in, in Calcasieu Parish in particular is the amount of time it takes to go to trial. 
Now, the, these were a few years ago. I, I, I don't have any recent numbers. I've been trying to find them, but the national average from whenever someone is accused of a crime to whenever they either plead or go to trial, national average, 88 days. Average in Cockshoe Parish, 372 days. Four times longer than any place else. And what happens in an awful lot of these cases, and, and I've heard several of the candidates, I, I, I've been watching throughout the day, and I've heard several of the candidates talk about this, and it's absolutely true, that you'll have some young kid, he'll get charged with, with a, a minor crime, they'll put him in jail, they'll set a bond for him, he can't afford that bond, so he sits in jail maybe three, four, five months, finally they bring him to court, and he thinks, all right, this is my chance. Well, they get him to court, the, the docket is way overbooked, and they say, look, you're not going to get to go to trial today, but if you go ahead and plead to this felony, we'll let you out. You can get out with time served. So, man, they, they plead, but they're out of jail, but they're not free because after that they have a felony on their record. If they go apply for a job and they say, do you have a felony on your record? Yes. If they go and apply for housing and they say, do you have a felony on your record? Yes. I mean, they are branded for the rest of their life, and they did it. And sometimes, look, sometimes maybe they were guilty of the charge. Sometimes maybe they weren't, but they didn't want to have to sit around for 372 days for their day in court, for their shot at justice. And, and I can't blame them for that. And we have, have to do better than that. Uh, that's disgraceful. You know, it's, it's things like that is, is why I'm running for judge. And look, I, I, I don't think it's not a problem just of the, the, the judiciary. It's a problem of the system as a whole. It's a problem that needs to be worked out between the judges, between the, state, between the defense lawyers, between law enforcement. Everybody has to work together to, to help solve that problem. But I do think the creation of the magistrate judge is a good step in that direction. Because the theory behind this is that if you have a magistrate judge, instead of the judges having to fool with misdemeanors and setting bonds and, and all, they can then devote all their time to the more serious cases, to the, to the felony cases. And hopefully that's going to make the system go faster, and, and it should. Um, and, and also, like, as far as setting bonds, you know, look, if somebody's got a nonviolent uh, 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 offense that they're charged with. Again, look, if you can bond out, uh, a bond is supposed to be set to make sure that the person shows up for court. It's not to punish somebody. It's not to say, oh, you know, guilty, so we're setting a high bond. It's to make sure they show up for court. And that's all it should be for. I mean, th these ridiculous bonds of, you know, somebody setting a, a $4 million bond, and then, okay, well, look, tell you what, I'll give you a break, I'll cut it in half. I'll make it a $2 million bond. You know, that, that's ridiculous. Now, there, there's some criminals and some people charged with some crimes where they are a danger to society if they get out, that they could be a danger to their victims if they get out. And those people need to have high bonds and they need to be kept in jail until they can go to court and either, you know, prove that they're innocent or, or, or if not, then, then get sentenced. Um, but, you know, every bond has to be looked at uh, on an individual basis and look it, two people can be charged with the same crime but be totally different circumstances you know or, or you know totally different so you can't just blindly say all right well all of this is all going to be one that takes away from being what a judge is supposed to be about it. a judge you're supposed to make decisions based on each individual case and you know that that's what i'm going to do the the Running for judge is hard because there's not a whole lot. I mean, I can tell you about these technical things, but I can't tell you, oh, well, you know, on this, I'm going to do this or that. You know, I can't be specific because as a judge, you're not supposed to be. There's, there's only three things that I can promise you if I'm elected judge. The one is, and I think it's a very important one, is that I'm going to treat everybody who comes before me in court with respect, that I'm going to be polite and I'm going to be respectful of everybody. Number two is that I'm going to do whatever I can to protect the victims of crime, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do everything I can to protect them. And number three is that anybody who's accused of crime is going, to, I'm going to make sure that their rights are protected and that they are treated fairly. I, you know, I, I don't walk into the courtroom and say, oh, well, you know, you wouldn't be here unless you're guilty of something. And, you know, I, I, I hate to say it, but I do think there's judges who do that. You know, to me, you, you're, I believe in the United States Constitution. I, I believe that it's probably the greatest written work by man. And I say by man because there's other, you know, uh, written works that I, I think somebody else had a hand in writing. But uh, I believe in your innocent until you're proven guilty. And we take that for granted in this country because it, it's not like that all over the world. There's countries in this world where you're guilty until you prove yourself innocent. That's not how it is here. And, and, and it is being put in a position where you can judge people and, and you can decide kind of what their fate is that is not only a unique position, and it's not only an honor if you're chosen for such a position, it's a tremendous responsibility. And it is something that I would take seriously with my whole heart and soul. Um, and, and another point that I, I want to make real quickly, and, and then I'll, I'll take questions. This has been a very weird election cycle. Um, as, you know, because of COVID, and I, I very much appreciate y'all doing things like this, but you know, you, you're not out to, you're not able to get out and see people like you normally would. One other promise that I'll make you, and, and this isn't, doesn't have anything to do with the courtroom, but I can promise you that you'll see me more after this election than you'll see me during this election, because I believe that being a judge is not limited just to the courtroom. It is trying to help your community, is being involved, being involved with youth groups, being involved with church groups, being involved with the community as a whole to try to rise, to bring up the community to be better for all of us. Um, you know, if, if you want to know what my actions are going to be like in, in the future, and, and most of y'all know me, I mean, look at my actions have been like in the past. I, I've, I've, I've been in the fight, you know, I, I've, uh, I, I consider myself an ally, um, you know, I, I've, I try to stand up against injustice. Um, you know, I, earlier this week, I, I was watching a lot of the stuff that went along with the funeral of John Lewis. And the one thing that, that really stuck with me, um, first time he walked across that bridge, they beat the hell out of him. I mean, he, and I heard him say in interviews before, he thought he was going to die on that bridge. And afterwards, when he woke up in the hospital and he got out of the hospital and he walked out, and I've been in like life threatening situations before, and my first thought is, man, I'm never going to let that happen again. When he walked out of the hospital, the first thing he thought was, next time there's going to be more marchers. You know, that, that's, that's just, that's incredible. That, 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 uh, brings a tear to my one good eye. Um, but, you know, and I'm not going to say that we need more John Lewis's because I think there was only one, and I think the mold is certainly broken. Um, but I think, you know, uh, uh, whether you're black or white or, or whatever, we all need to be a little bit more like John Lewis. We all need to be a little bit more fearless and be willing to stand up for the things that we believe in and uh, to stand up for justice and for fairness and for equality for all people. Um, a, a, again, you know, I could ramble on about politics and stuff like that for hours and hours, but, you know, obviously we, we don't have that. And again, I, I want you to know how much I appreciate y'all doing something like this. Um, but with that, I'll, I'll open it up to questions if anybody has anything they'd like to ask. Uh, in, in the spirit of John Lewis, who you, you quoted earlier, uh, if you see something, say something. Even if it requires you to get in what? Good trouble. Yeah. 
And I believe that elected officials are held to a higher standard than all others. Uh, looking to become a judge, I've heard the candidates that are here, how do you facilitate change with the bail system, with the other thing? How do you facilitate that? Are you speaking in terms of individual as a, a judge, this is what you're going to do when it comes before your court? Or are you speaking in terms of bringing your colleagues together to, to, to really address the changes that need to be made as a group? and then facilitate that by going through, is it the legislature or the, or the, the local uh, folks here, building a consensus to bring that up to uh, Baton Rouge to change the laws that you're talking about? I'm, I'm speaking of both. Uh, I mean, certainly on, on an individual level, um, in my courtroom, if I'm elected, I'm gonna do everything I can to, to try to address those problems. Um, the other deal that I've always kind of considered myself uh, to be a consensus builder and to try to bring people together. And like I was saying earlier, I don't think this is a problem that just the judges can solve. I think it's got to be a combination of, you know, you have to work with the prosecutors, with the defense attorneys, with law enforcement and bring everybody together. Now, what all the solutions are right now, I, I, I don't know. And some of the things I think if I'm elected after I serve for a while, I think some of the, 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 the problems will become more apparent in what the possible solutions are. But certainly if there's something that I see that uh, I think is a problem that needs to be addressed through legislation or, or you know, needs to be addressed through the, through the legislature, and with it, I'll do everything I can to get other judges on board. I'll do everything I can to get legislatures on, uh, legislators on board and to get things done. I, I, I've always, one of the problems with politics today, I, I think, is it, it, it's, somebody once said it's amazing what you can get done if you don't care who gets the credit. Be honest, I don't care if I get the credit or not. I just want to get things done. What politics used to be in this country, and to me what it ought to be, and hopefully it will be again someday, is politics is the art of compromise. Politics is the art of bringing people together for the common good. Um, and, you know, I, I hope this kind of answers your question. But individually, yes. Uh, for other judges, yes. With the legislature, yes. I'm going to do whatever I can to try to make the system work better for everybody. Mike, uh, yeah. what will be your, you're elected this judge, what would be your first uh, thing that you judge? First thing that I would do um, is uh, I would sit down with, uh, and, and some of this I've, I'm doing even just running for judge, but I'd sit down with the court personnel, I would sit down with defense lawyers, I would sit down with uh, uh, prosecutors and say, all right, look, we need to make this run as efficiently as possible. We need to be able to get as much done. You know, what are your ideas? What are things that you think that we can do right now to address the backlog of cases that we have here in Couchy Parish? And right now, because of COVID, it's becoming even larger. And I think that's going to take a, a, a while to get through that. Um, but, you know, uh, first thing, and, and I've been in criminal court. Uh, enough over 25 years. I mean, I know how the system works, and there's some things that I already have in mind that I know, look, man, we need to do this differently, we need to do that different. And some of them are big things, some of them are little things. Um, but, you know, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring everybody together and say, all right, look, just kind of brainstorm. How do we make this work better? Anybody else? All right, well. Uh, I, I, again, th thank you all very much for doing this. Uh, again, I apologize about the whole uh, eye situation. I look a little bit like a white Nick Fury, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, so, you know. Um, but, but, but uh, again, thank you all very much. Uh, God bless you all. God bless the great state of Louisiana. Thank you very much.